It's a puppet! How to make mini cookie cakes recipe! Welcome to my channel! Today we're somewhere that you guys have never seen before! It's my kitchen! Ooh, isn't it amazing? Isn't it beautiful? As you know, I like exploring and having fun everywhere! And I realised that it was finally time for an adventure in the kitchen! And for our very first recipe, I chose a tutorial on how to make mini cookie cakes! Mini cookie cakes are simply perfect. They're a combination of the two most amazing things in the world. Cookies and cakes. Cookie cakes! The recipe for how to make a mini cookie cake is extremely easy, so anyone can do it. And when I say anyone, I really mean anyone. Even me. So, put on your aprons and let the fun begin. Recipes. For today's video, I invited my good friend, Helping Hands. Hi, Helping Hands. Helping Hands and myself are great friends. And it was actually Helping Hands, wasn't it, who wrote to me asking for this recipe. Helping Hands saw mini cookie cakes at a party and just fell in love with them. So, grab a pencil and paper and let's take notes of what we need for our amazing cookie cakes. For your mini cookie cakes, you will need a packet of chocolate sandwich cookies, ready to spread cake icing in vanilla flavour, or if you don't have any vanilla ready to spread cake icing, you can always use cream cheese. And finally, you will need some sprinkles for decoration. OK, helping hands. So, this is very simple. First, grab one of the chocolate cookies, one of these sandwich cookies here. These are the ones that we have here are filled with vanilla. Mmm. So, we open the cookie and remove the filling from inside. Exactly like helping hands is doing now. That was easy. You twist off the top and let's remove the filling. Perfect! Thank you, Helping Hands. Now, save the spare cookie for later. We're going to use that later, Helping Hands. Then, all you have to do is use the filling you removed to stick two other cookies together. Oh, like this. I think Helping Hands is going to show us. Using the filling, putting it on top of one cookie. Oh, I see. And then, putting the other cookie on top. I understand. So now it's like a big stack of cookies, but they all have filling in the middle. How clever. Next, take the cake icing and spread it all around your cake. This can be a bit messy, but with a little patience and some help from your helping hands, you will get there. And remember, if you don't have ready to spread cake icing, you can always use cream cheese. This does look tricky. I'm going to stay away. I don't want icing in my fur. So as you can see, not only is the icing going on top of the cake, but we're putting it all around the edges too. Are you okay there, Helping Hands? Okay. Well, um, gosh. Now, if you made <laughs> a little bit of mess, as we clearly did over here, you should try and clean up a bit before you carry on. So Helping Hands, let's tidy this up. Wow, perfect Helping Hands, thanks very much. As you can see, Helping Hands has cleaned up the table for us and uh, <laughs> got a little bit carried away there, has made some extra cakes for us, but thanks Helping Hands, looks great. So, now get the cookie you saved earlier, break it in half and rub the two pieces together on top of the cake, as demonstrated by the lovely Helping Hands, who made far too many cakes. This will create amazing cookie sprinkles on the top. Yay! Oh, one more. Thank you very much, Helping Hands. And because I also have some colourful sprinkles in my colourful kitchen, I'm going to make a different version. Here they are. Ooh, they are colourful, aren't they? Wow. Careful, Helping Hands, you just clean that up. It's so pretty! 
Wow, they really do look amazing and they're so easy to make. <sighs> it's impossible not to fall in love with these cute, tiny, mini little cookie cakes. They're so awesome. You've got to pass me a piece, please, helping hands. No, why not? Ah, oh, they're not all for you. You're going to take them all. Helping hands. What about our friendship? What about everything we've done together? What about all the mini cookie cakes we made together as friends? Oh, helping hands, you ate a whole half. Oh, I suppose I could have the rest later. Was it at least nice? Good. Well, I'm glad about that then. Well, the helping hands seem to enjoy it, and I think you guys will enjoy it too. And I think I'm going to spend the afternoon making and eating more mini cookie cakes. So, if you guys like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and learn how to make more fun, easy recipes with me, Pip the Puppet. Bye! How to make multicolour lollipops recipe. Hello everyone, I am Pip the Puppet. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're in my super duper kitchen. And can you guess why? Hmm, can we guess why? Well, I can tell you why, because today we're going to learn how to make awesome, multicolour, flavoured lollipops! Yay! This is a very simple recipe that will make you lots and lots of very tasty sweet treats. How cool is that? I'm excited. And, well, the kitchen is a great place to have fun, but... Well, you know, it might it might have some tools that are a bit tricky to use. So for this reason, make sure you have an adult with you every time you're making a recipe to supervise. Today, supervising me in the kitchen, I have the wonderful, the incredible, the amazing, award-winning chef, Helping Hands. Hi, Helping Hands. Helping Hands over here is a specialist in fun, kid-friendly recipes. And of course... A great friend of mine as well. So, put your aprons on and let the fun begin! Recipes! Making multicolour flavoured lollipops at home is very easy. You will only need your favourite hard candy, popsicle sticks, a baking tray and a sheet of baking paper. OK, helping hands, you may be an award-winning chef, but I also have quite a good knowledge of baking and cooking, I will have you know. And so I know the first thing we need is to cover our baking tray with baking paper. Shall we do that? Yes, we shall. Wow, well done, helping hands. Yeah, that's pretty good, I guess. I'm joking, it's perfect, thank you. What's next, helping hands? Ah, the popsicle sticks. This bit's quite easy. All you have to do is place the popsicle sticks on your tray vertically in a nice neat row and make sure you space them quite far apart. It gives you room to make your lollies. I guess these will be the sticks for our lollipops. Am I right, helping hands? Great! Now comes my favourite part. Unwrap your hard candies and line them up on top of each popsicle stick. Helping hands, can we have our unwrapped hard candies, please? Helping hands? Hey, helping hands! What are you doing? Helping hands, are you eating the candy? Oh, no, I can't, I can't believe... Hey, can, can we stop shooting, please? Can we stop? Honestly, helping hands, I can see what you're doing. We already talked about this. If you eat the ingredients before we make the recipe, there's no way we can carry on shooting. Helping hands! He I'm coming over there. Okay, helping hands has learned that they must not eat the ingredients and we bought some extra candy, so now we're good to go. As I was saying, all you have to do is grab your unwrapped hard candies and line them up on top of each stick, exactly as helping hands is going to beautifully do right now. I like putting five candies per stick, four on the stick itself and one at the end. This is because once they melt, they'll join together and expand. I'm using lovely fruit sweets and I'm going to mix the flavours to get a very colourful lollipop. But 
If you prefer, you can make only one flavour and keep only one colour. You can also try and make a little baby lollipop and add only one candy on the end of the stick. The great thing about this recipe is that it really is completely up to you. You can be as creative as you want. OK, we're almost done. Our candies are very nicely lined up thanks to helping hands. They're over the popsicle sticks on the baking tray. So now, ask for an adult to place the tray in the oven at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for about 6 to 8 minutes, as helping hands is going to help me do right now. Lovely. Thank you very much, helping hands. Now the longer they cook, the more they'll thin out. So as soon as they start to melt, take them out. Otherwise, they'll start forming bubbles everywhere. Ooh, I'm so curious. Do you want to see what our finished multicolour flavoured lollipops look like? Well, so do I. Helping hands. Helping hands, please bring in the lollies. Yeah, lollipops, lollipops. <gasps> wow, look at those. They look amazing, helping hands. I want to taste one now. Helping hands, can I have a lollipop, please? Thank you. Can I have a red one, please? Yep, that's the one. Lollipop, 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 lollipop. Oh, thank you. It's so pretty. I wonder if they taste as good as they look. Uh, they really do. They taste as good as they look. And these multicolour flavoured lollipops are so easy to make. And they're so beautiful. So, thank you for all of your help, Helping Hands. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel. And of course, let me know in the comments below which other fun, easy recipes you would like to learn. Now, I'm going to stay here enjoying these beautiful sweet treats. Bye! How to make delicious cake pops recipe. Hello everyone, Pip the Puppet in the hand. Welcome to my channel. You've asked and we're back in my super duper kitchen. Are you happy? Yay! You are? Me too. Because today we're going to make everyone's favourite recipe. Cake pops! Cake pops! Cake pops are delicious little gifts. Perfect for transforming ordinary moments into special sweet moments. Ah. They're also very easy to do and so cute! So, put your aprons on and let the fun begin! Recipes! Time to grab a pencil and some paper and take notes of the ingredients you will need for this delicious recipe. Two units of your favourite sponge cake. Two spoons of Nutella. One block of dark chocolate some cake pop sticks, some sprinkles, some dried coconut, and one large bowl. OK, all set, but no recipe is complete without that extra special ingredient, world famous chef, helping hands. Helping hands, we need a hand in the kitchen. Oh, wow, <laughs> that was fast. How are you, helping hands? Are you excited? Me too! I can tell you're very excited. I know that cake pops are your favourites. So, shall we start? So, the first step in making your cake pops is to put the cakes in the bowl. Exactly as Helping Hands is doing now. I chose vanilla cake because it's my favourite, but you can choose chocolate or any other yummy flavour that you like best. Your favourite cake goes in the bowl. So, then you break up the cake into fine crumbs. You can start with a spoon, but soon you will need your hands. Helping Hands is using a spoon for now. Come on, Helping Hands, I want to see you get in the bowl. Yay! Now remember, just as Helping Hands is helping me, you can always get an adult to help you make your cake pops. Ooh, it almost looks like playing with sand at the beach. I wish I could join in, but I think all the crumbs would get stuck in my fur. Like all good chefs, Helping Hands is a bit of a perfectionist. So Helping Hands is taking their time, and you can too. But pretty soon, I think we're ready to move on to the next step. 
Well done, helping hands. Thanks for doing that. So now we've got our cake all nice and crumbly. It's time to add the Nutella. We're going to add two spoons of Nutella. That's two spoons, helping hands. Don't get carried away. Helping hands loves Nutella. But here's a special tip. Add the Nutella a little bit at a time, as helping hands is going to do, until the cake is moist, but still slightly crumbly. You can start with a spoon as helping hands is to mix the Nutella with the cake crumbs but soon you're gonna need to use your hands again. Did you hear that helping hands? Time to jump inside the bowl again. <laughs> Can't wait to see that. Great job helping hands but uh it seems like you might need a shower so go and go and wash yourself in the sink before we carry on. Helping hands have you finished in the shower yet? Great! Now you're all nice and clean. Get back in the bowl and grab some of the mixture. <laughs> what you have to do is you have to put it on your hands, roll the mixture into a tight ball, as Helping Hands is nicely demonstrating now, and place them on a plate. And you, uh, well, you basically do this until you run out of mixture. It's Helping Hands' is time to shine. You're doing very well. Now you might need an adult to help you with this, and you'll also need a bit of patience, but don't worry, it all pays off. I'm going to watch Helping Hands make some cake pops for us now. And just like that, Helping Hands has got us eight lovely looking cake pops. Almost, because whilst they do look delicious and I could probably start eating them now, mm, I know that they're going to get even better. So let's move on and get our cake pops finished. Now, melt a quarter of your chocolate bar in the microwave. Thank you, Helping Hands. This next part is quite fun, because we're going to dip the tip of the cake pop sticks into the melted chocolate and then into the cake balls about halfway, exactly as Helping Hands is going to do now. So, the stick's gone in the chocolate and now into the cake pops. Perfect! Now hopefully that chocolate means that the sticks won't come out of the cake pops. They should stay where they are. And just keep going until all the sticks are in all the pops. Mmm! Ta-da! All done! Almost! Now you have to put your plate in the freezer and leave it there for about... Mm, 20 minutes or so. Oh, that's just enough time to watch some of my videos on YouTube while you wait. Time will fly. Thank you, Helping Hands. And we're back. That was quick. So, which of my videos have you watched? Let me know in the comments. Now, let's melt the remaining chocolate in a mug. Ta-da! Here it is. The mug shape makes it easier to fully dip the cake pops in, but make sure you have enough chocolate to completely submerge them. So, dip the cake pops carefully into the chocolate until they're completely covered. Helping Hands is helping us do this right now. Ooh, that's it. You have to let the excess chocolate drip off. So swirl it, gently tap it if you need to. Excellent, Helping Hands. That's great. I think we're ready to add the sprinkles. Now you want to do this while the chocolate is still kind of melty, still kind of wet, and it's gonna get hard pretty quickly, so hurry up, helping hands. What should we do? Ooh, we have some coconut, I think. Wow. Looks so pretty, like a snowball. We've got lots of different decorations here, and you can use any decorations you want to make your cake pops as pretty as you like. Looks like we've got some chocolate and some sprinkles and some coconut. <gasps> wow! And it's as easy as that. That looks amazing, Helping Hands. So now we just need to repeat this for all of the cake pops to decorate all of them 
And this is the best part because this is where we can get creative. Come on, Helping Hands, I want to see how artistic you can get. I want to see the most amazing cake pops in the world. I look yet helping hands okay I'll take that as a yes <gasps> wow well helping hands these are the most beautiful cake pops I've ever seen I'm so proud of you helping hands you really did make some amazing cake pops did you make some amazing cake pops at home hmm well now I guess I have the difficult job of Eating this entire tray. Oh no, what a shame. <laughs> oh, oh yes, of course. Help yourself, helping hands. After all, you did make these wonderful pieces of art. Enjoy. Well, if you like this recipe, give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There are so many more cool videos waiting for you over there. Bye. Five DIY Halloween treats and snacks recipe. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my spooky kitchen <laughs> Today we have a very special video Where we're going to learn not one, not two, not three, but five Different gruesome recipes for Halloween Horrible helping hands The menu please <laughs> That's great, so for today's macabre menu, we have eerie eggs, chopped finger sandwiches, Dracula's dribble, jack o' lantern quesadillas, and spider sponges. Oh, yummy! What a delicious selection! I can already smell the fingers crisping up in our cooker. <laughs> Are you guys ready for this dreadful experience? Then put on your aprons and let the fun begin! Recipes Halloween Special My cauldron is boiling and the full moon is shining. It's time to start our bizarre banquet. And if you're still scared of cooking, don't worry. We'll begin with a very, very easy treat. The eerie eggs. For this recipe, you will need a saucepan, a bowl or glass, a spoon, food colouring and eggs. The first thing you need to know about the eerie eggs is that they need to be prepared one day in advance. This is because of the dyeing process, but it's still a very simple snack. To begin, just fill a saucepan with water and bring it to the boil. And um. What do we need when we have boiling water? <gasps> An assistant, of course! Never play in the kitchen without adult supervision. So, horrible helping hands! I need your help in this spooky kitchen! Oh, that was quick! <laughs> now, all you have to do is pop the egg into the water. And when it boils, let the water simmer for about... Mm, 10 minutes! <laughs> Then take the pan off the heat and cool in cold water. But only take the eggs out of the pan once they are cold and that way you can avoid any accidental burns. Now once you've taken your eggs out of the cold water, using the back of a spoon carefully crack the shells all over. Exactly as Helping Hands is doing now. Once you're done you can place the eggs in a bowl or in our case a glass. helping hands then add approximately one tablespoon of food coloring of your favorite color and cover the glass with the colorful water I chose blue to make it really creepy so now you just need to leave the egg submerged in the colorful water for about eight hours meanwhile you can either go to sleep 
or watch some horror movies. <laughs> Eight hours have passed and our eerie eggs are almost done. All you have to do now is peel the eggs, a task that I will leave to the sinister helping hands. <gasps> and there you have it, eerie eggs ready to be eaten. This is a perfect appetizer for a spooky Halloween meal. You could also make loads of them and serve them on a tray for your friends. <laughs> How gruesome is that? <laughs> Moving on with our repulsive recipes. Next is a classic, the famous chopped fingers sandwich. An impressive dish, but again, very easy to make. Now, you don't need to chop anyone's fingers off to make the sandwich. Just call Horrible Helping Hands and they'll do all the chopping for you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No one's harmed during this recipe. Here's what you really need to make four chopped finger sandwiches. You will need a pack of four frankfurters, four small bread rolls, one radish, tomato ketchup, a wooden spoon, and a knife. To start, grab your wooden spoon and use its handle to make a hole almost all the way through each roll. Uh, horrible helping hands, could you please show us how to do this? Thank you. Just make sure you don't go all the way through the roll. Now, you should repeat this with the remaining bread rolls. Well done, horrible helping hands. Now, we all know you can't have chopped fingers without some blood. <laughs> yep, it's blood time and there's nothing better than ketchup to give things a little creepy touch. Now, add a little ketchup into each roll and leave them on the side for a bit. The ketchup will help create a dripping blood effect once we add the frankfurters inside. Ooh, looks like our rolls are done and it's time to work on the frankfurters. Our frankfurters here have been boiled already, so make sure you ask an adult to help you with yours. Once you finish boiling them, keep the adult with you because now we need to use a knife. Ooh. Horrible helping hands, it's knife time. Ooh. So now, in each frankfurter, Cut a little slice off the end to look a bit like a bed for each fingernail. Just like Horrible Helping Hands is doing now. When you finish cutting, push each frankfurter into each of the four rolls. Just like Horrible Helping Hands is doing now. Ooh, this is so spooky! I can see some serious bleeding in the sandwich now. When you've got your first frankfurter in the first roll, repeat the same for all the remaining frankfurters. Hooray! We're almost done. Time to make the fingernails now. With the help of an adult, cut a very thin slice of radish. Once you've done that, Trim it to make it look like a real fingernail, just like Horrible Helping Hands is doing now. Finally, when you've made all of your radish fingernails, insert one nail into each frankfurter of our sandwiches. And ta-da! Your chopped finger sandwich is ready. Ooh, it looks so real. They look so scary. They look so, so 
Yummy! <laughs> Your friends are going to love these devilish snacks. Okay, we've already learned how to make some sickening Halloween snacks. So, what about a ghoulish soft drink? Our next recipe is a blood-curdling beverage that will impress your thirsty guests. Yes, I am talking about Dracula's Dribble. Ooh. <laughs> so, grab a pencil and paper and take note of what you will need for a glass of this infamous spooky drink. You will need one thick slice of cucumber, one glass of cola, one dessert spoon of your favourite ice cream, a knife, a tall glass and two straws. So, how do we start making our Dracula's Dribble horrible helping hands? Oh, yes of course! Let's start with the vampire fangs. Ask for an adult to cut the cucumber slice in the shape of fangs, just as Helping Hands is doing now. You can use your creativity to make it very spooky. Well done, horrible Helping Hands. You can also use food colouring to make them even more spooky. Ooh. You did a repulsive job. <laughs> Leave them on the side as we'll use them for decoration in a moment. Now, I'll fill the glass with cola. Mmm, I love cola. Then, grab a spoon of your favourite ice cream flavour. Horrible helping hands and I chose vanilla and add it to the glass. some of Dracula's dribble is appearing straight away. Now top it up with more cola as it goes frothy. Wow! Finally, just pop in the straws, decorate with the fangs, and that's it! An easy, quick, but still terrifying drink to serve at your hideous Halloween party. <laughs> Our next recipe is nothing less than spooktacular. No Halloween is complete without a carved pumpkin. But, um, finding a pumpkin to carve is not always an easy task. So, for this reason, Horrible Helping Hands and I decided to make jack-o'-lantern quesadillas. That's right, you can have a grisly time carving tortillas. All you need to make this very simple recipe is flour tortillas, preferably yellow or orange, your favourite grated cheese, one teaspoon of oil, a knife, a skillet pan and a cutting board. OK, carving is really, really fun, but because you need a knife and the cooker for this recipe, make sure you have an adult supervising you in the kitchen. Horrible helping hands! Can you please give me a hand over here? The first thing you'll have to do is put a tortilla on the cutting board. Then, using a knife, cut two triangles for the eyes and a crescent for the mouth, exactly as Helping Hands is doing now. There's no right or wrong way here. You can let loose your creativity to create some very original faces. Horrible helping hands. That's a pretty spooky tortilla you've made there. <laughs> now, just leave it on the side for a moment. Now that your tortilla's fearsome face is ready, it's time to move to the cooker. Turn the cooker to a medium heat and add one teaspoon of oil to the skillet. Perfect. Next, add one tortilla without eyes or a mouth and sprinkle half a cup of your favourite cheese on top. Horrible helping hands and I chose some orange cheddar because of its nice smoothy colour. 
Then cover it with your cutout tortilla and cook for one or two minutes until the underside is golden and the cheese is melted. Ta-da! And here you have three different versions of the jack-o'-lantern quesadillas. This is a very simple recipe and it's a super fun one to make with friends and family. You can even have a competition to see who can make the scariest jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> so, we are almost reaching the end of our macabre menu. And so far we've cooked up some otherworldly recipes. But after all those savoury snacks, <laughs> well, I'm craving a sweet treat. Oh, horrible helping hands. Looks like you want a sweet treat too. Well, that's perfect because it's time for our spider sponges. Ooh. I can't imagine anything more fun and easy than this recipe. All you need for this ghastly dessert is muffins of your favourite flavour, white cake icing, black sweets for the spider's body, small sweets for the spider's eyes, and licorice laces for the spider's legs. The first thing you'll have to do for this recipe is ice the muffin. <laughs> I love icing cakes, but usually I make a big mess. The icing we have here is vanilla flavour. Mmm! <laughs> it seems that horrible helping hands is quite messy too. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. Cooking is more about having fun than perfection. Talking about fun, here comes my favourite part. After icing the muffin, use all your sweets to build a spooky spider. So using the black brown sweet, we will make the body. Then, because spiders have eight legs, we'll use eight pieces of licorice lace for the legs, four on each side. <laughs> Just like Horrible Helping Hands is doing now. Wow! Looks spooky already. But finally, with the small colourful sweets, we're going to make the eyes. Now, we're going to choose pink eyes to make this spider even more creepy looking. But you can pick any colour you like. Hmm. Yes, it looks very good, but I wonder what blue or even purple eyes would look like. Shall we try helping hands? <laughs> so, here you have three different spine-tingling spider sponges. These are perfect for your Halloween party and will make your friends shudder at the sight of them. <laughs> Don't you think, horrible helping hands? <laughs> Well, that's everything from my spooky kitchen. Did you like our gruesome recipes for Halloween? If so, give this video a thumbs up and leave your comments. And if you don't, you may regret it for the rest of eternity. <laughs>